Freak out. How's it going? Um, hopefully you guys are staying safe. Um, it's getting warmer outside. You're getting outside a little bit. Still practicing a little bit of social distancing. Um, when, when things start opening back up, you'll, you'll find yourself um, getting back to some kind of normal routine, a su summer routine. I think it's going to be a hot summer with how mild of a winter it was. That's, that's what I've heard anyways from, from Arizona. It's like 105 there right now. So um, I, I'm curious to see what summer is going to be like here. Um, let's get started. Week seven, we're, we're talking sequences. Last week we learned about um, like a recursive sequence and we learned about arithmetic sequences. And then we learned about what a series is when you add up all the terms. Um, we really only talked about the one type, the arithmetic, where you're adding over and over. So um, let, let's get into this one, okay? This is going to be geometric sequences this time around. And um, I, I briefly hit on it last week, but we'll hit it good. A geometric sequence um, is just one where you're multiplying over and over and over. So here's a sequence. I'm obviously not adding each time because how much I'm adding is changing, so that's not a common difference, we called it. Um, but this time we call it a common ratio. The ratio between successive terms, 1 divided by a half, 2 divided by 1, 4 divided by 2. If you divide successive terms like that, um, you'll get what's called the common ratio, what you're multiplying by each time, and we'll call that R. So our common ratio R for this particular sequence, which we'll talk about a little bit here, uh, is 2 times 1 by 2. Piece of cake, right? Okay, so here's what I want, a little thought experiment. Um, we are, you have a little sibling or cousin or someone smaller than you comes in, and asks you to describe this sequence, okay, without just giving them a formula, what would you have to tell them to describe that sequence? Think about it for a second. Okay? Um, you can't just say uh, it doubles every time. You can't say it you times by two every time, and even though that's important, you, you need to say that, but you can't just say that. Um, you need to know two things. Hopefully you thought of this. Where am I starting from, and what am I doing each time? If you know those two things, you can describe this sequence or any sequence, but definitely geometric sequences. So for this one, you got to start from a half. Okay, that's our starting point. Then we're going to multiply by two over and over and over. Okay, repeated multiplication. Multiply by two once. Multiply by two again. That would be two squared. Multiply by two again. That would be two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth. What well, we're talking about an exponential, two to the power of. So I'm trying to work into um, our nth term formula for geometric sequences, and um, don't copy this just yet. Think for a second. Is that is that what we're talking about? I'm starting at a half, and then I'm timesing by two over and over and over. Does that make sense to us? Hopefully a, a lot of it does, but we, we have this same thing happen with our arithmetic sequences. Um, we could check it. If I want the first term of my sequence, I would plug a 1 into this, and 2 to the first power is 2. 2 times a half is 1. But was that our first term? It was not. When half is our first term, we're over too far. With how I just made that formula right here, we're actually starting at, that would give me the second term of the sequence. So, so we need to move it over 1. So just like we did with arithmetic sequences, to make this match up and line up the way it should with our sequence, um, we don't want n, we want n minus 1. Because that'll, that'll move us over 1. So um, if I had a half times 2 to the n minus 1 power, that would line up with all these terms, first term a half. Let's check it. If it was n minus 1, if I plug in a 1, 1 minus 1, 0. 2 to the 0, 1. 1 times a half, a half. Yes, if I plugged in a 1 into that edited version, I would get 1 half, okay? So here it is, in all of its grandeur and glory, a geometric nth term formula for a geometric se sequence looks like this. Nth term equals, you know the first term, you know what the common ratio is, and you know what term we're looking for. What, where are we at in this sequence? Okay. <clears throat> Not too bad. Let's try a, a practice round with this. Here's a sequence. 3, 36, 432. I want two things from this. So I want you to hit pause in a second and find the nth term formula. Like a formula to get me any term I want. That's what the nth term formula is. And then I want you to find the seventh term. So use your formula and find the seventh term. Go ahead. Hit pause. Okay, we are back. Hopefully you did some examination and inspection of that sequence and realized that uh, the first term was 3. Yeah, we got that, a sub 1. And then the common ratio was 12. I was timesing by 12 over and over and over. So we just put those things where they belong in the nth term formula, and then we're done. I mean, um, where in the arithmetic one you had to do a little bit of like distributive property and simplifying, this is it. This is as far as I can take this. I can't mush those together and call that 
36, okay? So because the 12 is being raised to some power and the 3 isn't. So that's our nth term formula. The last, the second part of the question asks you to find the seventh term of the sequence. Okay, so I'm going to want to find a sub 7. I'm going to take the n out. I'm going to put a 7 in its place. Well, if I do it over here, I have to do it over here as well. So I plug in 7, jam it in my calculator, <clears throat> and I'm dancing. Big term there. That's okay. The common ratio was 12, so that's kind of expected. Okay, let's step up our game a little bit. That's a little bit too easy. Here's a sequence. Um, the I want you to find the common ratio, like what am I times in by each time. If I know the fourth term of my sequence is 125, and I know the tenth term of my sequence is a 125 over 64. Okay, think about it for a second. What can you come up with? Okay. Um, I gave you guys the nth term formula here just to kind of show you what we're dealing with. If, if I want a10, I could put a10 in right here. I could put in an n for 10. If I put a 10 here, I would put a 10 here, and but then I'm missing a1. Okay, I could try the same thing with a4. I could plug in a4. I could plug a 4 in for n, a 4 in for n. Um, 125 would be my a4. But again, I don't have a1 and r. But what you just made with those two pieces of information would be a system of equations. And we can solve systems of equations. It's, it's not terribly easy, but it would work. And then we have that fallback plan. But let, let's take a look a little bit um, at this. So here is my sequence, or any sequence really. Hopefully the pink shows up. It's just a generic sequence. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the term of the sequence. Um, looking at what was given to me in the problem, I have the fourth and I have the tenth. Okay, we can just look at it and say, if I start with the fourth, how many jumps would I need to do? How many times would I need to times by r, right? Each time you get to the next term, you're, you're multiplying by r. So I would multiply by r once, twice, three, four, five, six, to get to my tenth term. So to get to my tenth term, I could start from my fourth term and times by r six times. Well, what I just said, let's, let's make that into a math sentence. There it is. If I want my tenth term, I can start at my fourth term and multiply by r six times. Okay, this, this is a little thing to remember when we're dealing with geometric sequences. This will always work that way. Whatever term here, whatever number is right here, these two have to add to that. Whatever term you start on, you have to multiply by r that many times. As long as those two numbers uh, add up to that number, you're good. You're dancing. Okay, so what's handy about this is I know what a10 is. I know what a4 is. The only thing I don't know is r. Well, good. That's what the problem asks for. Find the common ratio. So I'll plug those numbers in that we know. Tenth term, fourth term. I'll divide by 125. That'll give me 1 over 64. Okay. I'll take a sixth root. That's a little different. If you need help with that on your calculator or can't find it, you can always raise it to the 1 sixth power. So let's do, um, I'll do parentheses 1 over 64 to the 1 sixth power. It's a half. Common ratio is 0.5. One half. Not too bad. Okay, just to, to tack something on here, and I, I wasn't very original here. This problem came from your book, so you can see how I explain it. You can read how they explain it and just um, <clears throat> get as much information as you can. Find what works for you. What if I ask you for the 14th term? 14th term, okay. Um, we have our formula, right, but we don't know A1. We could back up. Well, now that we know it's one half, we could back up and get A1 and find the first term. Or we can use our little trick here, which is what I suggest you do. If I want to find the 14th term, I could take the fourth term, and then that would be r to the 10th. They'd have to add up to that. Or since I have the 10th term, I could do a 10. That's what I'm talking about here with these two things. Right? Both of these will give me the 14th term of the sequence. Because 10 and 4, 14. 4 and 10, 14. I know what a10 is, I know what r is, now that we just did that. So I can plug those in, rip through that, or plug those in, rip through that. Both of these equal 125 over 1,024. Um, I'm assuming you would rip it in your calculator and get a decimal, but it's good to have this skill too. You need to be able to write things with fractions, and that's it. Okay. So we're dealing with geometric sequences. We're multiplying over and over and over. Um, things that depreciate in value. It's losing 10% of its value every year. So losing 10% means it would keep 90% of its value. So you were multiplying by 0.9 for the first year. And then multiply that by 0.9 for the second year. And then multiply by 0.9 over and over and over. Just a, an example of 
where we would see geometric sequencing. How much will it be worth after five years? Something like that. Okay. So just like after geometric sequences, uh, we need to talk series. And series is where we add this stuff up. So geometric series. Uh, Mrs. Kenny does a fantastic job of deriving this formula. And, and I, I love that. I, I'm, I don't have as much time, so I'm not going to go through that derivation. But take a look at hers. It's pretty sneaky. People were really smart when they came up with this stuff. And um, it's pretty impressive. So here we are. We're looking for the sum of a certain number of terms for a geometric sequence. Don't try using this for arithmetic or any other one. It has to be geometric. We need the first term. We know what the common ratio is. And we need to know how many there are. Not too bad, right? Okay. Let's try it. I want to find the sum of this little sigma notation guy. Okay. A couple of things to notice here. Um, it's not arithmetic. To be an arithmetic sequence means it'll look linear. Y equals mx plus b. Maybe 2n plus 5 negative 3n minus 1, something like that. that would be arithmetic, and that's a different formula, not this formula. But this is a geometric sequence because I have some base raised to a variable power. It's an exponential, okay? If our function looks exponential, that will give us a geometric sequence. And if you're ever stuck on these, I don't know if it's arithmetic, I don't know if it's geometric, I don't know if it's something else, just plug in some numbers. Plug in a 1, then plug in a 2, then plug in a 3, and, and examine your sequence. Is it multiplying by the same number every time? Is it adding by the same number every time? Is it doing something different? Okay, so we're here. It's geometric. We just talked about that, so I should be thinking about this thing. We need to know what the first term of the my sequence is. The first term of my sequence will always come from plugging in whatever the lower limit of summation is. It doesn't always have to be a 1. It makes sense. First term of the sequence, plug in a 1. But sometimes we'll do a partial sum where we only go from maybe 3 to 9. So it'll say a1 in my formula, but that just means the first term of my sequence, so we would plug in a 3, if this is a 3. It's not, so we're going to plug in a 1 here, and we'll find a sub 1. There's a sub 1, plugged it in. Next, we need to know what r is, the common ratio. What am I multiplying by over and over and over? That's 1.1. 1.1 to the n power is repeated multiplication. So I'm multiplying by 1.1 over and over and over, whatever our base is. Okay. We put that stuff in our formula. And we rip it. Um, be careful with that when you, how you plug it in. There's a lot of um, denominators and dividing. I would separate your numerator from your denominator with parentheses when you plug it in, then times by 2.2. Um, whatever you need, whatever you need to make it happen. Okay, not too bad. I think we'll end it there. I got 12 minutes, 45 seconds. I only got 15. So um, come back. There's a, like a half a video, five minutes to left to finish, and we'll, we'll talk about an infinite geometric series. What happens when you go to infinity? You may think, well, if I'm just adding, it's going to keep adding and adding and adding, it's going to go to infinity too. But does it? We'll examine that in a second, you guys. Okay, um, see you in a second.